Hey everyone, welcome back to the 6-5 Summit. I'm Daniel Newman, one of the hosts here at the 6-5. It's day two. We are in the semiconductor track spotlight session. I've got Adeline Tay joining me from Micron. Adeline, welcome to the 6-5 Summit. First timer. Hey, Dan. Thank you for having me here in the summit. So good to have you here. Um, today we're going to talk about how Micron is harnessing the power of AI in its fabs. And as we know, AI is one of the hottest topics in the market. It doesn't matter if you're in SaaS or you're in chips or you're anywhere in between. Right now, pretty much every business is focusing on how to implement, build, uh, invest around a future that's going to be powered by AI. So no surprise that Micron is on that same path. And I look forward to talking to you about that. Now, the events theme is all about navigating rough waters. The focus was that we knew that there was a bit of a, of a downturn. The semiconductor business has definitely felt it. PCs, infrastructure, we've seen rifts and layoffs, high interest rates. Uh, you know, We're seeing lots of economic indicators that there are challenges, but we believe you can innovate through these things. So start with that. Talk about how Micron is navigating rough waters with practical innovation. Right. You know, Dan, my, my team actually works a lot with data. You know, we draw insight from them and turning this insight into a better business outcome. My role is to enable our manufacturing plan to use data to improve our yield, quality, and productivity. As you already mentioned, you know, um, Semicon has been in the integrated part of our life, you know, from smartphones and computers to autonomous vehicle. Um, it serves as a building blocks that enable all this innovation that shape our daily life. Uh, you know, in recent times, you know, our industry has faced unique challenges um, and it's the most severe demand um, supply imbalance in the last 13 years. We do face a lot of challenges, you know. However, in such situation, we definitely need to adapt and find innovative ways to remain competitive and sustain our operation. And I think that is where the AI power innovation has helped us to navigate the downturn. Um, specifically, you know, our team works a lot on implementing our industrial for technologies, uh, which kind of leveraging the big data to improve our own manufacturing processes. Our journey actually started in 2014 with our FAB um, leveraging machine learning to improve manufacturing operation and to reduce our tool idle time. We use AI in our fabrication, assembly, and test facilities that help us achieve um, better business outcome. In Micron, we actually collect petabytes of in-house manufacturing data. Our data scientist uses this information for insight to develop models for AI and machine learning that improve and enhance the manufacturing processes. We use a lot of the robotic process automation, mobile technology, as well as the AR and VR tools that have become essential to maintain productivity in our manufacturing operations. Yeah. So let me let me ask you, you know, I, it sounds to me, Adeline, like you're using a lot of automation. You're using a lot of artificial intelligence. You're taking the data to continually optimize the manufacturing process in fab and fab uh, around the world. Um, but we've also, you know, seen that the company's been very innovative in its own process, right? Um, you know, in the last few years, you've seen big process node enhancements. You've announced the one beta DRAM, 232 layer NAND. You know, can you make that connection, the abilities for you to make these innovations and launch these innovations into market? Is AI and the smart manufacturing providing uh, you guys the, the, the pathway to launch these new technologies and bring them to market? Right. We actually built our own integrated new analytical platform that leverages um, AI and machine learning auto diagnostic capabilities <clears throat> across more than a thousand of the production and metrology steps. We conducted automated root cause analysis and corrective actions, enabling quick resolve equipment downtime and process deviation. On top of that, we actually employ a lot of VLO analytics to process millions of images per day to monitor real-time manufacturing process anomaly. This includes detecting anomaly in the manufacturing processes as 
all this technology can help us to sense things that even the most highly trained human personnel cannot see, hear, or feel. I think AI can perform this task with laser sharp precision in a fraction of the time. Also, in our part of our processes, we actually enable early drift detection that might impact our tool or products. We have integrated facilities and tool sensors into our IoT platforms and our control centers. Um, we set up remote operation centers that operates 24 by 7, which also functions as a central hub for manufacturing and engineering to achieve lights out fit. The center also has a web-based deviation management platform, which enables our staff to analyze and correct aberration in processes in real time. This allows them to react to problem and have access to the solution quickly. We actually reduce the time to resolve some of this quality issue by half. And Adeline, didn't uh, Micron see some really impressive uh, outputs after making these improvements when they when they ramped up the one beta DRAM and two thirty two? Um, yes, you're right. You know, in fact, um, this has this solution has hit historical high yield because of the delicate Micron team members and the creative use of our AI in our manufacturing processes. Um, the mature U target faster than any of the node in the history of Micron. And I believe you know, part of it is the harnessing of the power of this AI technology that we are using in the fact that help us to hit these targets. So, so Adeline, um, you know, clearly you've been implementing inside the, the, the Micron facilities. And it sounds like you're using a, a lot of sensors to basically help you A, create, you know, highest levels of productivity, the, the, the most significant yields from all of your, you know, fabrication. Uh, you're, you've got a ton of data being generated as well across the fabs. So are you basically, you know, you're, you're getting all this visual data, the camera data. Um, have you guys been able to note meaningful productivity gains by taking all this data and applying it and using AI and ML? Can you say, that since you've applied it, you're getting more productivity out of your fab your fabs than you did prior? Yep. In fact, you know, I'll, I'll answer this question in two aspects. One of the AI use cases we have implemented is our planning digital twin. Our digital twin models enable us to be more agile in running our production line with three key features. First, it optimizes the short-term output with AI-powered advanced tactical scheduling. Two, it manages mid-term capacity with full plant digital model, actively adjusting our asset configuration based on our best simulated outcomes. Three, it does the network level simulation globally of capacity and wafer loading that optimize our product RAM and CapEx strategy. And this has enabled us to react and adjust quickly to demand changes. The second part of this is really on our labor productivity. I think I mentioned about, you know, the various automation application we have developed to provide the insights and human needs to manually extract data for troubleshooting and, and analysis. So apart from what we have built um, in terms of decision making, we also deploy mobile application that actually assist our technician, notifying them of maintenance job and helping them to prioritize them for maximum efficiency. Material scheduling, is automated to improve the utilization of these tools and our space. You know, documentation is done electronically and it provides an easy way to track performance and compliance. And, you know, in the near future, we're actually looking at augmented reality that we use to assist them in task execution and remote support for expert resources. So let's pivot, Adeline. I'd like to talk a little bit about something else that's been really important on a world on the world stage, and that's sustainability. So as AI continues to proliferate, as we see more GPUs deployed and therefore more memory, um, we will see power increase. And so it's really important that the industry takes a leadership role in terms of being more sustainable, of putting climate first and doing so in a meaningful way. And uh, Micron was recently named by the, the, the WEF, the World Economic Forum, 
um, for its new Singapore Fab, and, and, and they, they named it a uh, sustainability lighthouse. And it's now, as far as I understand it, it's the first front-end semiconductor fab in the world to receive this recognition. First of all, tell me a little bit about this recognition, what it is. And talk a little bit about, more about how what you're doing with smart manufacturing is really driving eco-efficient operations and more sustainability from you know the manufacturing process. Well, I mean, the World Economic Forum is actually recognizing factory that has made uh, certain standards of you know, achieving sustainability goal um, has been set up for. In Micron, we already first achieved the World Economic Forum Lighthouse for Industrial 4.0. Uh, we went on to take up the challenges to get ourselves on the stage in terms of the sustainability ground. And how did we do that? We can only improve when we monitor some things. So where there's needed, we actually deploy um, sensors such as flow meters, you know, that help us to capture missing data that drive the granularity optimizations. Our team partner closely with the Fed to create the actionable insights with all these AI ML model of our processes based on this environmental footprint, such as energy efficiency, waste reduction, and greenhouse gas emission. Giving you a very practical example, no, but we do perform a lot of process conversion in the line and part of the current processes will require a carbon footprint buy-off on top of the traditional qualifications. So I want to kind of go outside the fabs a little bit because obviously AI and ML is going to be a big part of Micron's futures. I mean, right now, I've been listening to the earnings reports of pretty much every major tech company in the last quarter, and every one of them has come out now with sort of a declarative, this is our AI strategy. Whether it's, you know, being embedded into products, whether it's picks and, you know, we, we say picks and shovels, the things that are going to be used to, to enable the industry. Micron has a little bit of both because you can't do compute without memory. So there's a very important uh, relationship there. But talk about how AI and ML is being used across Micron outside of just the fabs. Okay. Our team also have implementation in both procurement and supply chain data processing through the ML models that provide the strategic recommendation on cost saving, supplier selection, and risk mitigation based on the changing market dynamics. By integrating all these insights from the various category specific cost and market intelligence, you know, the solution actually helps eliminate most of the manual and ad hoc analysis as it triggers real-time alert to our category managers on negotiation and sourcing strategy opportunities. Another tool that we have actually helped develop is to allow our sales team to reach better pricing for our product based on product complexity, differentiating factors, markets, and customer dynamics. So, as we kind of wrap up our conversation, um, let's look, let's think about industry wide. So, you're uh, you work in a number of industries. You supply to a number of industries. Your technology, you know, whether it's in automotive or in in devices, or you know, of course, you your 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 technology supports healthcare and financial services. You know. How do you see all the industry four methods and smart manufacturing practices that you are implementing as valuable and, and, and how can they be applied to the other industries that you work with and maybe even beyond that? Right. Um, I'll suggest looking into three areas, um, you know, partnerships, technologies, and even how the organization has been set up to make sure that you know, they are successful in their journey. I think the key enablers it has contributed to our success, including working with our industry partners and academia to build a smart ecosystem. We have our joint data science program with our key equipment supplier that greatly benefit both parties in knowing the equipment and process better. We also look at technology players and startup not traditionally serving Semicon. Micron actually has a USD 300 million AUM AI venture funds, where we invested in all these startups on AI technology. Invest and choose the right technology backbones for our use cases, as many of these smart manufacturing initiatives involve big data and massive compute power for data manipulation and analysis. 
this actually will help you to skill better, you know, when you have a successful pilot. It is also important to think through and define your smart manufacturing organization, the role and responsibility of the different teams, and how smart manufacturing um, can be adopted um, in your factories or in your industry better. So I think that, you know, to kind of summarize the conversation, Adeline, and first of all, thanks so much for spending some time with me. Uh, you know, Micron is taking a very inside approach, uh, inside out approach to how it, it leverages and utilizes the power of AI. It sounds like really at the core of your manufacturing, smart manufacturing strategy, you're using it to do everything from create greater efficiencies to being more sustainable in, in how you're developing and producing semiconductors. And then of course, it sounds like you also, and hopefully you are, is you're working closely with industry and customers to help them take some of the best practices that you've learned in terms of developing your own manufacturing strategy and helping other companies take advantage of some of these technologies. And of course, lots of memory to be sold <laughs> for all these companies that wanna use all the compute and all of the applications that they're gonna wanna run. It's all that data, it's gonna need all that memory that's good for Micron. So I want to just say thank you, Adeline, so much for taking the time to join us here at the 6.5 Summit. Really interesting stuff that you're doing at, at Micron. Smart manufacturing, greater sustainability, and of course, the utilization of AI across every part of the business is going to be critical long term for any company that wants to be competitive in really any industry. So I hope we'll have you back sometime soon. Thanks for joining us at this year's 6.5 Summit. Thank you, Dan. All right, everybody, there you have it. We are here in the semiconductor track. It's day two. Really interesting conversation there about smart manufacturing. A lot to learn from a company and from someone that spent a lot of time, a lot of effort to build out a world leading and of course recognized world leading manufacturing process, even focusing in on important things like sustainability. Stay tuned, more 6.5 Summit coming your way.